On to exercise 3.10. This one's a little interesting. We're asked to give examples of when a theorem might fail if some of the premises do not hold. Um, by the way, I've also included theorem 3.5 here for reference. So he gives us two potential scenarios to consider, and we are actually going to go through and do both of them. So let's do proof number one of the first scenario, because if we prove it for two different things, then it's twice as true. Just kidding. So let d nu x equal dx over x and d mu x equals dx on 0, 1. What does this mean exactly? This is a little bit potentially like unfamiliar notation. So um, for all e in whatever sigma algebra we've got, we have uh, nu of e is equal to the integral over e of 1 over x dx, and this um, we can write as integral over e 1 over x d mu of x because dx is just d mu of x. Um, And mu of e is just the integral over e of dx, which is just the Lebesgue measure of e. So basically, mu is the Lebesgue measure, because whenever we're dealing with dx, that's just a regular measure that we've kind of grown up with through doing calculus, and the one that's familiar to us. So anyways, uh, we want to show that it is not the case that for every epsilon greater than or equal to, well, okay. So we want to prove, first of all, that nu is not finite, and then that for every epsilon greater than zero, it there is no delta greater than zero, such that if mu of e is l less than delta, then the absolute value of nu of e is less than epsilon. We don't want this being less than delta to imply this being less than epsilon. So let's go through this. Um, first of all, uh, for all delta greater than zero, what is nu of zero delta? This is just the integral from zero to delta of one over x dx, and that's equal to, let's see here, the limit as, we'll take epsilon going to zero, but we want to make sure that epsilon is less than delta, um, because we're basically going to be expressing this as a limit. So integral epsilon to delta of one over x dx, that's just limit as epsilon goes down to zero, of so your log delta minus log epsilon. This is, of course, natural log. Um, I just write it as log. That's just, well, the, this part is going to drop out if we do this greater than or equal to sign. So log epsilon, and this goes down to minus infinity, and so this is positive infinity. And so, um, so nu is not finite. There we go. Okay, so we know that nu is not finite. Um, also, because we did this with uh, arbitrary delta, that will help uh, make this next part a little quicker, given any epsilon greater than zero and delta greater than zero. Let E be the set zero to delta over two. 
Then we've got mu of e is equal to delta over 2, which is obviously less than delta, but the absolute value of nu of e, as we know, um, is equal to infinity. So for all epsilon greater than 0, there does not exist delta greater than 0, mu of e is less than delta implies that norm of nu of e is less than epsilon. So then uh, theorem, the conclusion of theorem 3.5 does not hold. So that takes care of the first um, problem. And now let's look at the next one. So this is going to be proof two. Here, let nu be the counting measure and mu e be the sum for all n in e of two to the minus n on the natural numbers n. Of course, again, I'm assuming these that this does not include zero. If you don't like that, let's just go with it for now. Um, nu of n is equal to infinity since n is not finite. It's countable, but I mean, sometimes you can use the convention that finite sets are countable. So just to be very clear, I'm saying the natural numbers n, it's not a finite set. It's countably infinite. So the premise of theorem 3.5 does not hold. Now let epsilon be greater than zero. Um, note that sum from n equals one to infinity of two to the minus n, it's just one half plus a fourth plus an eighth, it's equal to one. This is less than infinity. I mean, I, I think. So anyways, the tail of this series must shrink. So we can choose n in the natural numbers large enough such that the sum from, so we're going to let epsilon and delta be greater than zero. Um, because if we prove that for this arbitrary epsilon and delta greater than zero, that um, this is true and this is not true, then it will hold that for every epsilon greater than zero it is not the case that there is a delta that makes um, this statement true. So anyways, sum from n equals capital N to infinity of 2 to the minus lowercase n. Let's draw it like an English letter. This is less than delta. Then let E be the set n, n plus 1, n plus 2, and so on. Then mu of E is, by definition, the sum over all n and E to the minus n. But this is just sum from n equals capital N to infinity of 2 to the minus n, which is less than delta. However, nu of e is equal to infinity since e is not finite. Hence, for all epsilon greater than zero, does not exist a delta greater than zero, mu of e less than delta implies 
nu of v plus an epsilon. So we've proven the exercise in two different scenarios.